oh man, new CPUs are out. If I buy this new CPU, I'm definitely gonna get like a 20% boost in my gaming performance in all my games at all times, except wait a minute, that's not how this actually works. So I think a lot of people, and I, I've been reading comment sections both on, on my videos about the new Alder Lake processors, but also posts all over the place on Reddit. I've actually seen people asking the question, hey, if I upgrade from like my 9700K to a 12900K, what kind of gaming performance would I actually see? And then the person says that they're gaming at 4K. So it's really important that people actually have some kind of baseline understanding of the fact that when you look at a CPU gaming performance review, it's really likely not going to affect your gaming performance by that amount. There are some situations where it would, but it's really important that you understand this. So when your game is producing the frame rates, you are usually bottlenecked by your GPU, not your CPU. And I use the word bottleneck there, but we could use the word limit. And this can actually jump up around like which one's your limit in the same game, even at the same settings, depending on what exactly scene you're in. But here's what's going on. Your GPU is producing the frames that actually go to your monitor and then to your eyes, right? So what happens is the higher the render resolution of the game and the higher the graphic settings you're using in the game, the longer it takes for your GPU to process each frame. And that's why you can get more frames per second when you lower the render resolution and, or the settings or both, and you get lower frames per second as you raise that. Many of you actually, I mean, will completely already understand this, but there's a surprising number of people who don't. So. <laughs> The thing is that usually that's your limit. Your CPU will feed your GPU a frame every time it's ready for it, and then that will get produced. Now, it's possible for you to have such a powerful GPU that's running at such low settings that the GPU is ready for more frames, but the CPU is not feeding it more frames because the CPU is going as fast as it possibly can, but it just can't keep up. And that's when you're at a CPU limit. Now, like I said, this can actually depend on the particular scene you're at in the game. For example, if you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and you're out in the wilderness, you're much more likely to be bottlenecked by your GPU. But if you're in the middle of a city where it's having to process the AI of all the different uh, people and animals and traffic going by, then you're much more likely to be limited by your CPU. Or at least you could be, depending again on your CPU, your GPU, and the exact graphic settings and resolution that you're playing at. So what I'm getting at here is when you look at the gaming performance reviews of a CPU, they're intentionally lowering the resolution and usually the graphics settings of the game, although different review outlets use different choices on this. Some of them go all the way down to 720p low settings, some, some of them do 1080p high settings. So you really might want to pay attention to that. And then again, the exact game that they select can have a big impact on this as well. But what you're generally looking at here is they are putting an extremely high-end GPU, like an RTX 3090 or a RX 6900 XT on a game at extremely low settings and resolutions so that they can intentionally try to make the game CPU limited. But the thing is, that type of use case and that type of computer build is completely unrealistic for the vast majority of gamers. Although there are some, some of you guys are sitting there right now, hey, I've got a, I've got a 6900 XT and I play it on 1080p. So there are the incredibly competitive esports players who are on maybe like a 360 hertz 1080p monitor and they're playing CSGO or something like that and they're wanting as many frames as they can possibly get. So they buy incredibly high-end CPUs and GPUs and an incredibly high refresh rate, low resolution monitor in order to maximize all of that potential for the frame rate. But the people doing that are an incredibly tiny percentage of the market. More people have a more balanced system and play a combination of competitive and single player games. Or maybe you do just play competitive multiplayer games, but you also want them to look nice and you're not literally in the top 0.1% of players where the difference between a 360 hertz 1080p monitor and a 144 hertz 1440p monitor actually makes a difference for you in terms of your performance. What am I getting at here? 
I'm getting at the fact that you should be very careful about just wasting your money on a new CPU for gaming specifically. When you have a GPU, especially in the current GPU market, or a monitor resolution, or the uh, graphic settings that you like to play at, won't actually benefit from the new CPU. Because, again, think of it as your GPU uh, is going to be your frame rate limiter most of the time, and your CPU only comes into play if your GPU is just crushing this game at such a high frame rate that um, it's having to wait for the CPU to feed it frames. So how do you figure out if you're actually limited by your CPU? Well, like I said, it can depend even within the same game. Sometimes you might be limited by your CPU if there's an incredibly CPU intensive scene happening. And then in that case, it might be up to you to be like, well, do, do I really care if this happens 5% of the time in the games that I'm playing, where buying a new CPU could help out my, my little uh, stutter in frame rate in this particular spot, or like, is that really worth a whole CPU upgrade for you? Or you might be CPU limited a lot of the time. Now, to tell, you might want to open up a performance monitoring app or overlay. A really common one to use is MSI Afterburner, although I've got to say that it's not necessarily the easiest one to get into in terms of the settings menus and how to get the things that you want on the on-screen display, although it is incredibly powerful. But if you have an AMD GPU, it has a really uh, easy to use and nice looking built-in performance overlay, and NVIDIA does as well. Heck, I think even the Windows game bar <laughs> on your Windows operating system can do a performance overlay these days. Now, what you're going to want to look for here is your GPU usage. And you might be like, why would I be looking at my GPU usage to see if I'm CPU limited? Well, the thing is, your CPU uh, might not be fully utilized by the game even if you're running into a CPU limit. And that's because not every game is going to be able to fully maximize all of the cores and threads that your CPU is capable of doing, and that's just based on the way the game is programming. Some games will be very single-threaded, and if a single thread is limiting your performance, then your overall CPU usage might be reporting as only like 25%, but you're not actually going to be able to get more frames out of the CPU in that game. So look at your GPU usage. Your GPU usage should be in the mid to upper 90% range, and if it's dropping below that, if it's dropping to like 90% or even below 90%, then there's a good chance that you are being limited by your CPU in that scene in the game that you're testing. So again, it would make sense to open up the games that you play on a regular basis or that you care about and actually take a look at that, uh, that GPU usage. Now, there, some of you guys are gonna be popping in the comments section, hey, it's not that simple. Okay, it's, it can be more complicated than by that. I mean, make sure that if you're, if you're setting a frame rate limiter in the game, for example, or if you're using VSync, where it will cap your performance at your monitor's refresh rate, well, then you might be uh, not actually CPU limited, but your GPU is not being fully utilized, and that's just because you're telling the game to just stop producing more frames at a certain point. And there's a few other things that can go on. Some game engines can go only go up to a certain amount, and some of them you can find a way to uncap them, and some of them you can't. So it's not exactly this simple, but in the majority of situations, if you make sure that VSync is off, and you don't have a frame rate limiter set, if your GPU usage is not consistently staying in the upper 90% range, near 100%, then you might be seeing some CPU limits, and the amount of CPU limit that you're seeing there, the amount that your GPU is being held back in its total performance, the amount less than 100% it is, and how often that's happening, that's gonna tell you how much performance you will actually gain by getting a new CPU that can keep up with your GPU. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you buy a newer GPU, maybe you weren't currently a C CPU limited on the GPU that you have now, but by buying a GPU that's capable of more performance, well then your old CPU might become the limit and then that's when you might wanna look at, at buying a new one. Now, I'm not getting into productivity here because that's a whole different argument. And some people worry about, well, what if I'm running a whole bunch of other apps at the same time as I'm gaming? Okay, well then when you're testing for the CPU limit, seeing, like I said, with the GPU utilization, 
situation and trying to test for that, simulate your normal playing environment. Have multiple things going, be streaming if you're a streamer, all of that, and take a look at that. Anyway, I don't want this video to ramble on too long, so I just want to make sure you guys aren't throwing money away uh, to try to get this 20% boost in gaming performance or whatever it is if your system won't actually see that performance jump based on your other hardware and the settings that you play at. Have an excellent day.